Take two. <laughs> so if you have a dog, or in particularly a husky, because that's the breed that I know, that is going crazy and eating your furniture or your baseboards or, you know, through a door. Um, then you may want to consider taking your dog to the dog park, to an off-leash dog park. Um, there are some pros and cons. The, there's a lot of, there's not a whole lot of pros, but the pros that you get are gigantic because what it means is that you get to have furniture that isn't chewn up and doors and baseboards that aren't eaten. So, um, because a dog park will allow your dog to run, uh, which is really what a husky wants and needs to do. Um, and so it lets them get off all that excess energy um, and it allows them to play. The other thing it does is it allows them to, to socialize. It allows them to socialize with other breeds, with their own breed. It also allows them to socialize with people, which is very, very important because you don't want to have a dog that is aggressive towards other people or aggressive towards any type of other dog. Um, beware because of prey drive that it would be better if you took your dog first or all the time because I do take my dog all the time to an off-leash dog park that has a separate section for little dogs but I still watch her because not everybody keeps their little dogs in the little dog section. Come on, load up. Load up, girls. Come here, Reese. Peace, I come. 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 She's like, I'll get up in the seat. <laughs> Did she get a stretchy one? No. Nothing. If, if you've ever dealt with that or <laughs> the video the little clip ahead of this then your huskies probably need to go either on a very 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 long walk or take them to the dog park for an hour or two our solution is the off-leash dog park uh, they need fenced, to run fenced off-leash dog park. fenced yeah if you think if you do not know how your dog is going to react to other dogs or other people get a muzzle and be safe about it if you're worried about how they're going to behave try to pick a time when there's not a lot of people there so that your dog is not overstimulated yeah. um, the first time I took Isa it was about negative 15 Celsius and so obviously a lot of people were not outside. <laughs> um, but it, the park was pretty empty, so it gave her a lot of room to get used to the other dog. Yeah, you wanna, I mean, try to pick times if you're trying to introduce it, even if it's just new to you and you're not sure that you know how to do, just go sometime when there's not a lot of people. You know, like if you have a holiday, go in the middle of the day. Um, if it's a Sunday, go early in the morning. We're going right now, right before supper time. It's yeah. just after 5 p.m. And we want to go now in the hopes that there won't be as many people, but I have a feeling there may be more people because it's getting dark out earlier now. So. Yep. We'll see. So the cons are, uh, we get a little bit uh, more into them, but they are manageable. So the con is, one of them is um, defensive aggression which basically means that they're not comfortable around other dogs and so therefore they can become aggressive and especially if the other dog is not paying attention to the signs of I don't want to play. I know because I have a dog that doesn't pay attention to those signs. 
Um, the other one is learned disobedience, which basically means that your dog learns that it can disobey you. It learns that it can outrun you. It learns it doesn't have to disobey you. If you have a husky, you know that your dog already knows this because a husky is going to husky. Um, I know when I take my, my girls to the park, I do not expect them to mind anything I say in the first 20 minutes because most of the time they're just going to run their little heads off. Then I start expecting them to mind me. Um, again, this can be mitigated by what I did with Issa um, because Huskies are difficult off leash sometimes is I started taking her to the dog park on a leash. So I knew how she would react around other dogs. She knew that she was safe with me, and then I slowly put her on a longer and longer leash, and I would call her to come to me, and she would get a treat when she came. Even though she was on the leash, she'd get a treat when she came back. So this is what I did, and then I did this for about a week, every day for a week. Um, and We would walk maybe two or three times around about a five-acre dog park. So, um, and it, it, that seemed to work really well. And now for the most part, she does obey me. But again, she's husky and a husky is going to husky. Um, the other one is that they can learn that you will not protect them. And that means that if they are uncomfortable or they feel like they are being attacked or bullied and you don't do anything about it, then they learn that you will not protect them. Uh, what I did with Issa was I made sure that I watched her very closely. If the hackles went up on her back or if she was giving signs like her tail tucked between her legs, her ears down that she didn't want to play, and another dog was insistent, I got between them and just stopped it from happening. So my dog's very well adjusted because she knows that I will stop other dogs from bullying her and all that stuff. Um, you do not want them to learn that you can't protect them or that you won't protect them. Um, another problem is they can learn bad behaviors from other dogs. Um, we have this problem, Bren, uh, which is our mix. She has the habit of grabbing collars um, and pulling dogs around. So what we did was the first time we went to the dog park, we had a muzzle on her. She didn't like it but she couldn't grab other dogs by the collar um, and therefore scare them and get in a fight or scare their owners and create issues. The second time we, we went without her having to have it on, but we watched her very, very closely. And anytime she got close, which was only one time, we uh, took the steps of, of telling her no and she actually obeyed us. We tell her no up at home all the time and she is getting better. However, my, my pure breed husky, um, Issa, has now learned that behavior. And sometimes she grabs Bren by the collar. We haven't seen her do it to any other dog, but they do learn from each other. So another one is different styles of play. And what I mean by that is, so uh, Bren, my mix, she wants to rough play and wrestle and, and throw each other down on the ground. And East, my purebred, really just wants to chase other dogs. <laughs> she would be the happiest dog ever if she could just chase another dog the entire time. Um, so what this can create is, and this actually did happen with Issa when I first started going, was that other dogs would want a rough house with her and I would have to get between them because she didn't know how to play that way and she didn't want to play that way. Um, and she was taking it as bullying. So again, that comes back to if you don't step in between, they think that you won't protect them and they can become aggressive towards other dogs. It's the same thing here. If you don't, um, they, can, they can become overwhelmed and it can make them aggressive and it can make them not to wanna to be around other dogs. It can make them afraid of other dogs. Uh, it can make them afraid of just a certain breed of dog or a certain look of dog. But you don't want to do that to any other dog and you don't want that to happen to your dog. Um, so, and then you have resource guarding. This is why you should never bring a dog's favorite toy to a dog park. Um, resource guarding happens in two ways. One, I throw a ball 
and my dog goes and gets the ball, but if any other dog gets close, they growl or snap at them. Uh, they're resource guarding their play toy. The other way it happens is that somebody throws a ball for their dog to go get and my dog runs and goes get, and my dog would run and go get it. Uh, I don't have a dog that does that, but my if my dog ran and went and got it, they are resource guarding somebody else's toy. This happens a lot at dog parks. It's unfortunate. People think it's okay. It is not okay. <laughs> um, Issa loves to find people who have those little throw sticks. She doesn't want to go get the ball. She wants to chase after the dog that's chasing the ball. But I have to tell, most of the time I have to tell owners because they won't throw the ball because they think she's going to go get it. Um, Bren is not really interested yet, but she's only been to the dog park three times. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and another one is they can become overprotective. Uh, meaning that your dog could get scared that these other dogs might hurt you and snarl and growl and bark or anything at other dogs that get close to you. And at a dog park, other dogs will walk up to you. Uh, they learn that, that everybody has treats, unfortunately. Um, so, or they can become protected of you from other people. However, this can work the other way too, because Bren is very protective of us. She started out very protective. Nobody could get within about 15 feet without her standing between us and the person and the closer they got the louder she growled um she never tried to bite anybody but she was growling and letting you know that she was there and she's a 65 pound dog it can be scary so uh, now she lets people talk to us and she doesn't have to be between us she's off playing somewhere she's not even standing right next to us um, she's today let two people actually touch her, which does not happen. So she's definitely improving in that. And um, she's not having an issue with other dogs. She's never really had an issue with other dogs. Um, some dogs do. So um, now th the ways to mitigate that, and again, it sounds like there are a lot of cons there, but the cons can be mitigated by don't bring your dog's favorite toy, um, Make sure that your dog, you know, if your dog is being overprotective, reassure them a lot. Make sure that you separate dogs. So here's a list of the, the do's and don'ts, and I'll basically give you a countdown. So the number one, don't. Don't enter a dog park if there's a bunch of dogs right around the entrance because that can overwhelm your dog, especially if your dog doesn't want to be there or is afraid of other dogs. Don't number two. Well, I guess I should say this is don't number, uh, don't number five. Don't number four is believe dogs can't, don't believe that dogs will work it out. Don't do that because your dog just learns that you won't protect them. Step in between them if your dog is uncomfortable. Step in between them if your dog is being the bully. Make sure that your dog learns what they should be learning and make sure that they're not bullying other dogs. Make sure that your dog learns that you will protect them. Uh, number three is stop paying attention to your dog. So don't go sit on a park bench and talk with other people and ignore your dog. Um, always know where your dog is and always pick up their poop, people. Do not leave their poop on the ground. But, and so always pick up their poop and always keep an eye on your dog. You want to know what your dog is feeling and where your dog is at at all times. And the uh, number two is if your dog is frightened, don't force them to stay in the park. If they don't want to go to the park, don't force them to go into the park. It may be that a few times that you just walk your dog up to the fence of the park um, and let them sniff and see if they get feeling okay with that. They may never feel okay with that, especially older dogs. Sometimes older dogs just don't want to socialize. And then the number one thing not to do, do not bring your dog to the dog park if it is not fully vaccinated. Make sure that your dog is fully vaccinated. We've had several dog parks 
closed in our area or been advisories because dogs have gotten sick. Um, I always make sure both my dogs are fully vaccinated, but definitely make sure they are fully vaccinated if they're going to go to a dog, an off-leash dog park or actually any park. Okay, and now the, the top six things to do um, with your dog. So number one, or number, number six, check out the entrance before entering um, and make sure that there aren't dogs congregating around the entrance, which is, you know, basically the same thing I said before on the don't. Don't go in if there are, but definitely check to see if they are. Um, number five is to pay close attention to your dog's style of play. If your dog likes to roughhouse and it's trying to roughhouse with the dog that is showing all the signs that it does not want to play that way, step in between them because your dog is being a bully. If your dog doesn't want a rough house and other dogs are trying to play, step in between them and stop it so that your dog learns that you will protect it. Number, th what am I at? Number four, walk around the park so your dog has to keep an eye on you as long as you watching your dog. So basically that means that your dog can't get, they'll try to find where you are because they might not know anybody else there. Um, East to this day, she walks with me. I just call her and she comes running and she'll run ahead of me 25, 30 feet. And then I'll pass her up and she'll get 25, 30 feet behind me and she'll sprint again right on ahead of me. So, um, she, and I walk around the dog park. So, you know, it, it helps them to keep them active and it also helps you to know your dog. So the number three is respect your dog's wish to leave. If they are afraid or uncomfortable, leave. Don't force them to stay. It's not going to make them like the place any better. Um, additionally, if your dog is aggressive and is being aggressive, leave the dog park. Uh, it's not fair to the other owners there. Today I watched a dog fight break out. Um, and you, sadly, you really have to be very careful around the little dogs because they tend to be more aggressive than the bigger dogs and the little dog owners are like, oh, they can't hurt you. Well, they can and then my dog could turn around and hurt yours. So just be careful with that and know your dog. Um, number two, do not bring your dog special toys, like don't bring their favorite toy out to the dog park that prevents resource guarding in one sense that they won't be guarding their own toy as much. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can work it all out and, and other dogs won't resource guard. It's not a huge issue in the park that I go to where I see other dogs running to get balls, but I have been to parks where it is a huge issue. And the number one thing to do, make sure your dog is fully vaccinated. Do not go to any park or public lands unless your dog is fully vaccinated. You don't want them to catch kennel cough. You don't want them to get parvo. Make sure your dog is fully vaccinated. So we went around the park twice and we have calmer dogs. Yes, much calmer dogs. Who got to play with big dogs <laughs> and little dogs. Well, that Rennie just collapsed they're in both, sleep. They're both very chill. <laughs> there we go. Mission accomplished. If you've done it right, when you come home from the dog park, this is what you'll be left with. A couple of very relaxed, mellowed out puppies. <laughs>